Well, I picked up a new laptop today. My um, one of my coworkers came up to me and said, "Hey, I've got a trunk load of laptops. You want them?" I'm like, "Oh boy, <laughs> how many hundreds of thousands of Dells am I going to get now?" Honest to God, though, whenever I get a laptop, it's almost always a Dell. <sighs> anyway, so we went out to the lot parking lot, and she popped open her trunk, which was filled with laptops. That's right, there were two laptops in the back of her Mini Cooper, and uh, not a room for one more. So, this HP caught my eye because I, I knew it was a, a much more modern business laptop, which is something I'm looking for to replace my Sony Vio. And uh, the Sony Vio is dying off. It's pretty much, pretty much uh, just a, I don't know, I'm going to use it as a, as a doorstop or a, you know, a wheel chalk or something. It's pretty bad. But, um, I'm like, hey, what's with the HP? And she says, well, it works, but it needs a keyboard. I'm like, oh, that's doable. So the other one was a Dell, of course. <laughs> and the Dell was, it, it was in rough shape. It had been, it looked like it had gone through World War II. It was missing pieces. It scratched. It looks like shit. But anyway, the HP is the one I was interested in. So I took everything, of course, that's the rule. When somebody offers you one thing, you take them all, because that's not just what you do. They're doing you a favor, so you do them a favor. So the HP, and you will see the Dell later. It's not in my house, it's in my office, but we'll talk about it another time. This HP is unique. Um, okay, it's not. No HP is unique, but it's... It, it's co-branded. It's an HP Compact. Um, shortly after HP acquired Compact, they continued to use the Compact name on some machines. It seemed to be pretty bizarre. I thought the Compact name was used primarily on the consumer products, but they actually kept it alive for the business products. And for a couple, for, I don't know, not too long, a couple years or so. And um, I think up until very recently, you could still buy a compact branded computer. I don't think you can anymore. Um, this was kind of like when the IBM uh, ThinkPad line was taken over by Lenovo. Same but different. No, not too different. All right, so <laughs> what do we have here? This is a sub notebook. This does not have a built-in optical drive. Now, in 2007, when it was made, Laptops typically had optical drives, even the small ones. This was the exception. This was the business portable machine. This was the one you give to your traveling salesman or your CEO would take on, on jet trips and, or whatever. This is the one that the movers and shakers, or the, the ground pounders, real estate agents, people who needed to get around and bring their data with them, this is what they were using. It's a slightly ruggedized laptop. Um, it can take a fall, and it looks like it has. Um, it's got some, mostly plastic, but I thought it had some metal components into it. Like, I believe it has a nice magnesium alloy case stiffener, which is pretty common on these types of laptops. But here it is, the HP Compact NC4440. 4400. Um, it has a, uh, a matte display. This is a um, 1024 by 768 XGA display. It originally had like an 80 gig drive, but it's got a 120 in it now. It had uh, 2 gigs of RAM, and now it's up to 3. Uh, no, it had 1. Sorry, 1 gig, and now it's at 3. Um, it's got plenty of connectivity for such a portable machine. It's got 3 USB ports, all Type 2. It's got a PCMCAA or PC card slot. Surprisingly, doesn't have an express card slot. I was a little surprised about that one, but it also has a memory card reader. And let's see, a unique sliding power key. 8 to 11 g built right in. Naturally, 2007, that was, by 2007, that was standard on just about every laptop made. Um, even the Black Friday specials <laughs> had it. <laughs> I used to sell uh, computers out of a retail store um, just before this one came out. And um, we, I worked for Office Depot, and we had a, a full computer lineup, you know, desktops, laptops, 
you know, all the big manufacturers. And uh, I sold, a, I mostly sold the bundle packs to consumers, like, you know, the, the box of computers. I, I bought one myself, actually. It was basically you buy a computer in a box. It's a monitor, tower, keyboard, mouse, all everything you need in one big giant box. People love those because it's one stop shopping. That has nothing to do with this laptop, but I just thought I'd mention it. Um, so we got uh, a yeah, nice uh, gigabit Ethernet, BGA, SV, uh, S video. On the underside, we've got our docking station port. Now, this sliding latch, I believe, is for a, an external battery pack. Like a clip-on base. I believe that's what it's for. It's missing all of its little rubber feet. I can probably make new ones. Hard drive is under that cover. This has a, uh, they call it the HP Mobile Data Protection System 3D. I am pretty certain that that 3D drive protection is nothing more than a 3D accelerometer which is used on Lenovo's I believe IBM had it first and uh, Apple was using them and many laptop hard drives have them. It's basically a little module that solders directly to the board. You wouldn't even know what it was if you saw it um, but it has the ability of detecting motion in all directions um, and if it detects a sudden movement in any direction, it immediately parks the head on the hard drive. And as a quick side note, if you install a hard drive that... Now Apple, when they started using these 3D accelerometers, um, they were part of the logic board. But then hard drive manufacturers started embedding them, embedding them on the drives themselves. So, if you install one of these drives on a MacBook, for example, MacBook Pro, that has a built-in 3D accelerometer, they actually cancel each other out. And it's the strangest thing. So you have to run a, a line of, uh, you have to run a Linux command, or a Unix command, sorry, that disables the onboard 3D accelerometer. Just side note, had to mention it, because it popped up in my mind, and I usually speak my mind, so. Okay. Next, so I took the laptop with Glee, and uh, it turns out it's actually pretty well featured. So it's a Core 2 Duo, 2 gigahertz, 64-bit processor. I believe it's 64-bit. I looked up the specs on Intel's website, and it comes up as a 64-bit processor. So, yeah. okay. um, Originally shipped with XP Pro, it's now running Windows 7, and it runs it fairly well. Um, it has these really nice rubberized buttons on the trackpad. This is something you don't see anymore with all the cost cutting and all of the, um, you know, just general cheapness of modern laptops. You don't usually see this. It's still got a, an eraser head mouse. I don't know what HP's brand, it was, brand name was for this. I, I believe they just used AccuPoint or TrackPoint, or TrackStick or something, whatever. There's a million different names for the same thing. But it works really well. I've been playing with it uh, the past hour or so, just screwing around with it. The keyboard is defective, so I don't know if it's a liquid spill or a damaged cable or uh, even an unplugged cable. It could be something stupid. But we're going to find out. We're going to pop it open and take a look and see if we can't fix it. Um, so half the key... Oh, well, some of the keys in the upper region don't function. Brightness up and down don't work. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of dodgy as to which keys do and do not work. But the styling of this laptop is what really caught my eye. It's typical mid-2000s HP, and it has a, um, it just has that, that real business built-for-a-purpose look, you know. Um, it's slick. I love the way it looks. This right here, this is something that uh, was popular back in the day, but if you, before gestures, gestures, I can't say that word. Is it gestures? Gestures? Gest gestures? Whatever. <laughs> before those days, trackpads were usually divided into regions. Um, I think uh, Toshiba had one of the most complicated ones. It actually had, like, 
these printed buttons all around it that were all part of the same trackpad service and if you pressed them in certain it would do things and menus would pop up and it would download spyware and shit um, but HP was known for having the uh, scrolling feature built into the trackpad and they would just print out little lines and if you if it sensed movement right here up and down like that it would scroll through documents it worked you know it worked it was a good thing to have, and uh, so now we're going to log in. But gestures solved that problem for everybody. It kind of unif unified trackpad design. Um, and, you know, you, could, you can scroll, zoom, pinch to zoom. Apple has the best trackpad of all of them, I have to say. You know, with all their millions and billions of dollars in engineering costs, the trackpads are absolutely the best ever. <laughs> Nobody can come close. Um, but these old trackpads, I mean, you know, the, the higher-end ones, you know, that were just basic trackpads, I mean, they, they worked well. They were accurate. They were, some were, some were muddy or slow, but generally they were, uh, they were nice, nice and pleasant to use. Let's put it that way. So let's open up the system, my computer system profile. And let's take a look at what we got here. So it is a Core 2 Duo T70-200, 2 gigahertz, 3 gigs of RAM, 32-bit Windows 7. Um, I want to see if there's any red flags. I'm not sure if that fingerprint reader... It's got a fingerprint reader on, this, on the uh, display frame. I've never seen that before. Um, I only see them here or, abs or just not even, not even on the machine. But it's got a fingerprint reader right here. I, I you know, for of course we're logging in. It's disabled, I think. But um, it's, uh, it's uh, I think it's disabled, or the driver's just not installed. Oh no shit! Trusted platform module. So yeah, it might actually be installed. Mass storage controller is missing. So it's got some drivers missing. Don't know what they are yet. Uh, mass storage would be. Mass storage is usually the. Um, the camera card slot that it has right here. So, all right, proper term would be uh, multimedia card or SD card slot, not camera card slot. But you know what I mean. It even has a really nice ambient light sensor right here. Um, so, if I go ahead and turn that on or off, does it work? Oh, I think the, the button's not working right now. But the ambient light sensor automatically adjusts the backlight. Of course, everyone knows that. Automatically adjusts the backlight based on the ambient light situation. Um, Apple uses them for the keyboard lighting and the display lighting um, on their MacBook series. So who wants to have some fun? Who wants to tear this sucker apart? And take a look at that keyboard and find out what the hell is wrong with it. If it can be fixed... As far as I know, no repair attempts have been made. It could be simple, it could be complicated. It could be a common cold, it could be cancer, we don't know. But we'll find out. So let me grab my tripod and we'll set it up and uh, get cracking. Okay, here we go. Let's crack it open. This laptop has all the keyboard um, screws marked clearly. These are best used um, if you have a T8 screwdriver. Um, otherwise, you can use a flat blade. It's pretty common in HP products. And compact. And so 
Selma goes. A new year is born and the old year takes its place on the pages of history. And in everybody's mind is an acute awareness of the passage of time. Did we get any 1949 calendars yet, Harry? Well, if you need the one from the garage, it's over there on the table. Oh, yeah. Hey, look, they're using a different girl this year. She isn't wearing much for January, is she? Wonder how she keeps warm. <laughs> oh, look, you're getting her. Must help a little. <laughs> hey, look, look at February. These things start to get interesting. She's hmm. taking off her gloves. When you get to this. June, don't expect anything. I throw that one out. Do you want more coffee? Yes, honey. You know, I have a feeling 1949 is going to be a very nice year. Started off very well. Yeah, I thought so. In fact, I was one of the best New Year's Eve parties. Make sure you buy war bonds, by the way. I didn't like about it. I don't like the idea of teaming the men against the women. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. That's how you access the display connector. Oh, yeah. Well, check this out. The entire bottom case of this machine is made of um, metal metallic substance. That's pretty cool. That's um, oh, magnesium alloy. And, uh, yeah. That's, I like to see that. Okay, let's just take them all out. Hello, boys. Boys, let me give you a word of fatherly advice. Never let yourselves get drawn into competition with girls. Try it, Pop. You don't think we play with girls, do you? Oh, no. What about the spelling match? When was that? Oh, you mean to the school Christmas party. We did the girls in the spelling match. Oh, and naturally the girls didn't try very hard, so the boys won hands down. Oh, no. They beat the pants off it. Uh, <laughs> gee, I don't remember that part. <laughs> Kind of difficult to pull apart because it's not as obvious as you'd like it to be. I've seen a variety of different closure methods. Ah, oh, there we go. Yeah. Cool, that was easy. 
Kai and I were talking about the New Year's Eve party. You know, I the believe the keyboard ball. comes out to the side. No, no. Kai and I were just talking about the games we played. Like the screw I Women and winners on me. Pretty solid group of male superiority. I know this is perfectly silly, Interesting. Funny, but has it ever occurred to you that women might lose to men on purpose? Do you have a fever on No, 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 I'm serious. Women are pretty strange. They might just do a thing like that, you know, just to make my husband feel superior. Sort of butter itself. No, there's a on it. At least not right after Christmas. Well, how do you explain the fact that women are such good losers? They lose all the time and they still smile. Oh, well, look out. Women lose, they smile. But they have their own little ways of getting even with us for beating. They're clever. They're much I beat Kat a little game of gin rummy the other night, and what did she do? Turned off my side of the electric blanket, and I nearly froze to death. <laughs> There's a connector for the active point. Maybe you're right. I wonder if that was just Harriet's way of getting even with you, you know, trying to make me think the girl's lost on purpose. Well, there's no doubt about it, huh? Is it gluten? Oh, we found our problem. Liquid damage. Right? No, no, it's glue, it's adhesive. Here's the cable. And... Looks to be pretty firmly in Alright. Get this out of here. It looks like a lot of the damage is in the region over here. This is where it doesn't really work so well. So I would be looking for damage on this flex cable right here. Nothing obvious. Although, looking at this connector though, this the uh, cable edge here, it's pretty nasty. Oh, here's the um, the other memory module. Pop a two gig module in there, and or a one gig. Right? I'll bet I can cross a penny closer to the edge of the linoleum. Let's see here. No signs of any liquid damage. Yeah, yeah, Laptop looks fine. pretty clean. I'm going to reassemble some of this because I didn't have to take all those screws out, so I'm going to put some of those back in place. Okay, so we got it partially reassembled. We can now do a power test. I want to, what I really want to do is reseat this keyboard cable, cable and see if uh, some of those keys come back to life. Um, while I have it apart, I'm retorquing all the screws, especially the display hinge screws. Um, you might as well retorque the CPU heatsink. Just make sure that you follow the torquing pattern. Sorry, the radio is a little loud. I should turn it down. But anyway, let me do that. I'm loving my private radio station. I've, I just listened to the FDR's, uh, one of FDR's presidential addresses talking about the um, reintegration of uh, World War II soldiers into society. It was pretty interesting. Item 3, untangling the mess. So we're going to plug, we're not going to bother plugging in the track point, AccuPoint thingy. Put the cable back in. Believe it or not, sometimes it actually works, but I don't see any physical damage to this cable, and I'm looking inside on the back side of the keyboard. I see no evidence of liquid damage, a couple of crumbs here and there, but nothing that would cause such a drastic loss of functionality. This cable isn't pinched or cut or brazed in any way. So, let's just give it a try. Now, we did actually, uh, oh, I didn't do this, but the, uh, the woman who gave it to me 
Um, tried an external keyboard and it worked fine. And that, I believe, is how she had been using the machine up until the last moments. We have this cable seated firmly in its slot. Press firmly, lock it down. Which is powered up. I'm going to just run it off the uh, power supply. There we go. If I have to buy a keyboard for it, I might as well just buy a whole system. I think it's a great little laptop, and I and I've said this before, but I do want to preserve or bring it back to life because I will be using it. Don't know for what, but I'll be using it. Let's open up the notepad. We have no Q. We have T Y A S D. Okay. So we haven't really gained anything back. We haven't really lost anything either. So I'm going to just twist the keyboard until the Q key starts to work. See if maybe there's a something else going on there. It's really this keyboard is not doing it. Press even, pressing hard doesn't do it. Return key works. So this keyboard is obviously, obviously, uh, you know, pretty, pretty well damaged. But why is it damaged? I can't figure that out. I don't know. Well, I guess I'm going to start looking for a keyboard. Um, I'll let you know. I'll do another video when it comes, if it comes, if I decide to do it. I mean, there's a lot of projects up in my uh, list of things to do, so you know, we'll uh, we'll take a look at it uh, at a later time. Thanks for watching, and uh, keep on doing what you're doing. I guess. I, yeah.